USA Today is out with a, a new poll this week. What does it show about what could be driving and, and in shaping the president's thinking? You know, we see the president not doing well uh, with his response to the coronavirus. We see approval for him going down. In our poll, he now trails uh, Joe Biden by 10 percentage points nationwide in a head-to-head. -head. And we find a big appetite for a more activist federal government. People, a majority of Americans, and that includes both Republicans and independents and Democrats, think the federal government ought to be doing more. I mean, I think when Americans look at what Larry Hogan said in Maryland, he's protecting those tests using the National Guard. He's protecting them from federal seizure. He's trying to protect his state interests because uh, he feels the federal government might work against those interests. Part of the result, I think, of the president not taking more forceful national action when it comes to taking care of the supply chain on these things or, or taking more control over when states close and open back up. That's something he has definitely left to the states. Phil, what, what are we hearing about this new target of China uh, on the president's radar? Because he keeps attacking them publicly, but is he actually going to take action against China? Well, Bob, he has threatened to take action. The president has said he's considering it uh, and, and, and sort of vaguely said that he would, that he thinks China should be punished. Uh, he has found ways, uh, and really over many weeks now, to point the finger at China, to blame uh, the Chinese for allowing this virus to escape its borders, for allowing it to spread first, of course, to Europe, uh, but then here to the United States. But it's unclear what action that will be exactly. Uh, the one thing driving the president is he wants to appear tough uh, on China. He sees this as a central campaign issue. He's trying to draw a contrast uh, with Vice President Biden, who, of course, was part of the Obama administration and the, the so-called pivot to Asia uh, several years ago. And so Trump is trying to use this coronavirus pandemic as a way to posture him, his administration vis-a-vis -vis China in a way that would help him in the fall campaign. Uh, but it's unclear what specific actions he would take. He has not spelled that out in detail. And Weijia, what are your impressions as a White House reporter? You saw Kaylee McEnany, the new press secretary at the lectern today. You see President Trump doing less of these two-hour daily briefings. What's going on with the new chief of staff, Mark Meadows, the new press secretary? Is there a shift in their whole approach to their management of this? Well, I think they had to make a change after they saw uh, how the president was performing when he was sort of, you know, at the podium and spitballing in many ways, free uh, falling in other ways uh, with these really long extended briefings that he was using also as a platform uh, to replace those campaign rallies that he was no longer having. And I think the team saw Overall, it was not helping him, and they had to change something. Um, over the weekend, the president said it was not worth it for him to have the briefings. Of course, that's not true, because at his core, he is the communicator and messenger in chief, and he's not going to relinquish that power. So what we saw this week was him doing the same thing taking questions from the press, but doing it in a different setting. So it was in a much more formal setting, and he was less combative, which was apparent. As far as his press secretary, I think it's a big shift from her predecessor because she was at the podium today. And, you know, I don't think we should give her too much credit for doing her job, but certainly it is a stark difference from uh, the previous press secretary, Stephanie Grisham, who didn't have a single press briefing. So I think uh, Kaylee McEnany, you know, she was out there. We knew that this was going to be the strategy to get in front of any bad messaging and try uh, to transition that to something positive for the president, which we certainly saw her at least attempt to do today. And Yamish, you're in that briefing room, but I was struck by one of your reports this week on NewsHour about reporting on the country, which is really where, where, where it really matters and where people are feeling this economic pain. And you see the economic numbers in state after state so troubling. What have you learned this week about how the summer looks for many Americans with the rising unemployment rate, with jobs not coming back in many sectors? People, frankly, are scared, Bob. They're scared for their futures. They're scared for their families. They're scared whether or not they're going to be able to survive and thrive in a financial and an emotional way when it comes to this outbreak. What you're seeing is jobless numbers that we just have never seen before. And the president is saying that he's hopeful that in the third or fourth quarter this year that things will get back to pot being positive. But what we know is that Americans are going to keep some of the behaviors that they've kept when, and, and learned throughout this outbreak. When will we see 
big, long lines at restaurants again, that might not come back and bounce back in the same way, even if mayors and governors continue to open up their economy. So I think what we're going to see is there are going to be a lot of essential workers. And when I say essential workers, I'm thinking of people that are also uh, grocery store people, that are people that are um, serving food, that those people who are essential to our society and the functioning of our society, that those people might be the most out of luck. So I think that there are just a lot of people who are, who are really afraid. I want to also add what Weezy was just talking about when it comes to the press secretary, because there was just such a big difference today. The big overall difference that I saw was that while the messaging is the same when you look at Kaylee McEnany, what you get from her is, I think, a less harsh. Um, she was pushing back on reporters, but in a way that seemed a little bit slicker. And I think as soon as she walked out, I thought, this is someone who President Trump will likely like because she's someone who has already cut her teeth on network TV, uh, auditioning for the mm -hmm. job almost in defending the president even before she met him. Susan, you're writing the book on Speaker Pelosi. I can't wait to read it. And she said this week she wants a trillion dollars in this next round of legislation to help states to address many of the concerns that Yamish just brought up that she's hearing from people out in the country. How realistic is it that Congress is going to come together because we know Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, he wants liability protection for businesses as part of this package if he's going to give any money to states. Well, the, the Congress has approved an extraordinary amount of spending already and in a pretty quick fashion and in a reasonably bipartisan way. But I think that's going to be tougher with this next bill that they're working on because the, the Democrats are going to insist on, on funding for state and local governments. Re Republicans have been less enthusiastic about that. Uh, Mitch McConnell, who is a conservative government with some history of worrying about debts and deficits, some of those concerns may come a little bit more to the fore. Republicans want to look at liability protection uh, for employers and others. So I, it seems to me there's going to be, it's going to be perhaps a longer process than we've seen. But we do see a big appetite for government spending by people who feel they are just underwater, under fire, under siege, and are really looking to the government to help them out. Uh, and that has been a uh, philosophy, that's been a sense of the country that has propelled the Congress to make some of these extraordinary expenditures so far. Phil, to wrap up this discussion about the White House, I want to start, go back to where we started, the, the raw politics driving so much of this. And The Post and others have reported this week the president had a private exchange with Brad Parscale, his campaign manager, pretty tense based on the reporting. What have you heard? That that's right, Bob. The president on Wednesday was uh, confronted by Brad Parscale's campaign manager, as well as Ronna McDaniel, the chairwoman of the Republican National Committee, who brought him a fresh batch of internal polling. Uh, and it actually showed Trump losing uh, to Joe Biden. It not only showed him losing to Biden, but showed that these press briefings that he's been doing every day were really taking a toll on his political standing and were damaging. And the president erupted uh, at his aides. He said that he didn't believe the numbers. Uh, he said that he can't possibly be losing to Biden, that he thinks people like his briefings. And it was a tense exchange and, and, and an acrimonious uh, back and forth with Parscale that extended for two days to the point where the president threatened to sue his campaign manager, although it's not clear uh, if he was being serious about that. They've since patched it up. And this is reporting, by the way, from our, our colleague and friend Josh Dossey. Uh, but it's a sign of how uh, much the political uh, standing, credibility, uh, fortunes of this president hang in the balance because of the pandemic.